and they're like, no, we're going Mormon. <laughs> I, I'm Lutheran, so, yeah, oh yeah, we're, Luther, I have a lot of bad habits. <sighs> I have a lot of vices, uh, mainly lutefisk and pickled herring. Um, I'm real sorry about that. Don't come by me. Uh, another, another bad Lutheran vice is the worst, watered down, weakest coffee you ever had in your life. Uh, and that's why there are so many Mormons that they've tried the basement Lutheran coffee. And they're like, no, we're going Mormon. Yeah, it's not, yeah, okay, see? <laughs> know your audience. Um, wow. I have uh, two degrees in clarinet, so yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That, that's why I do comedy. Uh, <laughs> like, clarinet never comes in handy for anything unless maybe you're driving and then you hit a deer and uh, you don't have a crowbar in your trunk to put it out of its misery. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow, last time I hit a deer, I had my clarinet with me and uh, I only got through like two songs and he was out. <laughs> That's, that's how good I am. Uh, <laughs> my first job was uh, actually beginning band teacher. That's what I did. Yeah. Oh, no. That is the job from H-E double hockey sticks. Oh, I mean it, too. I think, like, somebody went down to hell and scooped up some of the molten material and brought it back and cooled it off and said, behold, Flutes and recorders. <laughs> yeah, do you remember the recorder in school? Oh, that little plastic whistle. You think it's plastic, it's genuine hellfire brimstone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And every time you play the recorder, it calls the devil. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, and then the devil is like, ah, oh, crap, I gotta go up there and hear hot cross buns again. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> if, if there are ever anything to make all the dark forces in the world repent, it, it'd be 30 elementary kids playing hot cross bun <laughs> on recorder for three months. Ah. <laughs> uh, you know, and when you're a teacher, a first year teacher, you have such high hopes. You're like, yeah, kids, for the holiday program this year, we're gonna play something from Beethoven's Ninth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. By the third year, you're like, okay, you little turds. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this year we're just gonna play Jingle Bells and we're gonna go ahead and play it again for the spring concert. <laughs> <laughs> we have some teachers, maybe, huh? Do, are there some teachers in the crowd? Oh, you! Yeah. Oh my gosh! What? Get out now! Get out! I'm, I'm just joking. Um, what? What do you teach? Dance and yoga. Dance and yoga? Oh, wait, wait a second. You, dance. Parents? Dance. Dance and yoga in the school, or like you have your, your own studio? You, in, the you, in, the, in the school? What is money growing on trees in Utah? <laughs> How do you get dance and yoga in the schools? How, how is that possible? I mean, Wisconsin, we had at least a quarter on uh, polka, but that's understandable. I mean, polka, like you get I mean, you get out your rage doing, like, you can't, you can't get in trouble doing this <laughs> the whole time. Uh, I did, I tried yoga once because uh, uh, 
No, you remind me to get back on track later, but uh, I've been spending a lot of time in L.A. because I was sick of people appreciating me for what's on the inside. And, uh, oh, yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah. It's different. One time a gal came up to me after a show there and she's like, what's with your hair? Are you wearing any product? I was like, boy, I'm pretty sure I'm in the middle of a drug deal right now. I, I didn't know what to do. I didn't even know what product was. So, um, but, but the LA people are always giving me this Zen advice, right? They're always like, oh, you gotta live in the now, Mary Mac. Live in the now. And I'm like, what? The, the now? What? Am I a superhero? The now, it's like, duh, 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 duh. you don't even know when the now is till a little bit after the now. You know? Like, ah. Sometimes several days go by before I realize it's now. Yeah. <laughs> thanks. Oh, thanks. Well, but, but have you tried dabbling in the now? I've tried it. That's where I, yoga came in. And, and I learned this great move in yoga. Tell me if you teach it in your class. What you do, put your hands on the ground like this, right? Boy, the cameraman didn't know this stunt was coming. What's your... Put your hands, I don't know if you can keep up with this one. Uh, put your hands on the ground like that and stick this foot up in the air. And then what happens is all your negative energy sort of just shoots out your, your, this, it, sh it, does, it shoots out your big toe. And, um, it, it, and it like makes a rainbow. Yeah. It, yeah. You, you know this? It, 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 it makes a negativity rainbow and it lands on a baby in an airplane. <laughs> but then at the end of the class is the word we, we uh, would you be gracious and grateful at the end? And then they say namaste, but I didn't even know what that means. So I was, I was like, namaste, amen. And I, I was like, I was throwing amen in there because I'm like, I have a five punch card. I can't waste it on French. Jeez. <laughs> uh. Don't let people walk on you, you know? That's a good positive thing to think. Uh, I, that's my motto. Uh, I got a new motto. <clears throat> I am not the victim. Do you want to try it? Yeah? Ready? And I am not the victim. I am the killer. Yeah. Because you've got to think positive. It gets you through a bad day, let me tell you that. Uh, <laughs> you guys are gigglers. That's funny. Um, um, it's, it's hard to, uh, like, I, I grew up in northern Wisconsin, okay? Like, to Minnesotan parents in northern Wisconsin. That's a lot of white. Um, but we grew up there because my dad didn't want to live anywhere. You can't just take a leak outside. And... Yeah, that's all available to you there. Uh, but you try to explain that, a small town, 500 people big, you try to explain that to somebody from LA or New York, and you're like, well, in a town that size, you ever see a semi-truck, what a day that was. <laughs> you're excited, you're scared, you're like, oh man, maybe we're getting a shipment. <laughs> oh, something's coming in. Tell the townspeople, maybe it's my birthing hips. <laughs> oh yeah. You saw this physique coming down the street, didn't ya? In school, they tell you you're gonna develop. Ha, uh-uh. 
empty promise. <laughs> yeah, listen to my voice. You're probably like, oh, she sounds like a five-year-old, and yet she has the body of a fourth grader. <laughs> Yeah, that's a mixed message, so... Um, no, but if you are a woman and you got blessed with curves, you should be proud. You shouldn't hide. I mean, like, I didn't get, I didn't get any cleavage, okay? Because I'm from the forest. So, yeah. I, I only got fast food twice a year, guys. Tw yeah, I didn't get all the bovine growth hormones that the city gals are getting. Big Macs a year and I could have been somebody. Ah. <laughs> oh, thank you. Ah. Thank you. Well, that's how Cindy Crawford did it. Oh. But you know, we're taught like that. You, you um, open a magazine and the women look perfect in a magazine. I'm picking up bad habits. I'll see a man walking by, bags under his eyes, and, and I'll think, oh, that poor man, he's so tired, he's been working so hard. And then I'll see a woman walk by with bags under her eyes, and I think, ah, that poor woman, she looks like crap. <laughs> A double standard, right? Yes, it is. And who am I to talk? I gotta wear a lot of makeup just to look plain. Like, this is it. Yeah. I, I'm from Northern Wisconsin. All the women look like me there. Like, oh, a curvy boy. Oh. We're scrappy, you know, we're tough. I, I am used to scrappy women. I, I, uh, I met this gal one time up north by my folks' house. Her name was Eve, and uh, she was about 81, but like an old 81. And uh, Eve told me that for her living, she had been a trapper her whole life. And I was, first of all, I was like, oh, please let it be of animals. Oh gosh, please, please, please. Like, I walked right into this one. Uh, no, it was animals, so uh, she goes on telling me uh, about her heart surgery. Very tough, interesting lady. Um, uh, smoking as she was telling me about it because Eve is not a quitter. And um, I know. And, she, it was so interesting. She had a heart transplant, but it wasn't a, a human heart in there. It was like a part of a pig heart. Yeah, they kept her heart pumping. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Yes, it's a real science, you guys. It is. The, the only, only problem is you gotta wait till a pig dies in a car accident. <laughs> That could take months, so get on the pig list now, guys, before something happens to you. Oh, man. Then in uh, elementary and high school, my lunch ladies, their names, this is Wisconsin, oh my gosh. Bunny, Cookie, and Mo, right? Because in Wisconsin, as soon as you get out of the women's prison, uh, <laughs> You get enrolled into the Lunch Lady Protection Program. <laughs> oh, you want some more mac and cheese, baby? I'll give you another scoop for a hug. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. And then the mac and cheese was so thick. Do you remember school lunch? Like, they always served you a hot starch because they wanted to just, like, just see if you could learn in adverse conditions. <laughs> Who can learn when they're sleeping? Nobody can learn when they're sleeping. 
it was a comfort food because no, nobody wanted to be at school. Um, I, I want to ask about the comfort food. Do you guys have a comfort food here? What do you like? Cookies. That is so normal and good. Thank you. I asked the lady, front row LA, I said, you have a comfort food? She goes, yeah, salads. It's like, God, oh, no wonder I can't live in this piece of crap town. Mm. Yeah, salads. You can't even wipe a tear with a piece of salad. It's too wet. You can't. You, you need a tater tot. <laughs> you need that tater tot to soak up all the sobbing, you know? That's why tater tots were invented. They're like little sponges that absorb your emotions, okay? Oh, you got some sad on you. Let me sop that up. Like tater tots care about you. Not salad. I have to put my tater tot down. Salad, nuh-uh. That salad is cold and unconcerned with your problems. You need pizza. You need hot, you need like mashed potatoes. You need a man-sized mound of mashed potatoes that you can just burrow into. <laughs> burrow into it and make, make a feelings cave <laughs> and crawl up in there till you're ready to address life again. <laughs> Not lettuce. Le no, lettuce wants you to cry so you can grow more lettuce. <laughs> You guys are so nice. Uh, speaking of health and wellness, uh, I was in the DMV the other day, uh huh, and I saw a 98-year-old guy, and I know he was 98 because I was eavesdropping on him. And uh, he was, for, first of all, why do you still have to go to the DMV at that age? I feel like when you're like 85, can't they maybe give you a license and just be like, this is good enough. You, you've been here so much. It's cruel to make this guy keep going to the DMV. When can he have his forever license? So his great granddaughters are pushing him around in his wheelchair. He could walk. He was, he just didn't feel like walking. He was like, no, I've been doing walking for 97 years. I am done. And I get it, but the best thing, he goes, he goes, girls, did you mark me down as a donor? <laughs> oh, that's a real old heart. <laughs> who, who draws the short straw in that operation? We found your heart. Uh, bad news, you got two years to live. Sorry. Wow. But, but then the great granddaughters, they said, Grandpa, you can't check the box. You already donated your body to the University of Minnesota. So, like, I guess he gave it science, you know. But I hope it was science. I hope he wasn't like, send it to the English department. Uh, That'd be a great day in English class. <laughs> what are we doing today, Mr. Johnson? Well, a dead body came in. How does it make you feel? Uh, so, oh, oh, nice. <laughs> ah, thanks, guys. I, uh, oh, I married a comic. Um, yeah, oh no, I know. Two comedians, so much depression, so little time. <laughs> How do you do it? We don't, we never do it. <laughs> <I'm> back. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, he, he's wonderful, but I think it's so funny. Are, are there a lot of married folks in here? Okay, all right. So you'll get this and then you tell the others. Uh, you never marry who you think you're gonna marry. And, and he's wonderful, but in junior high, girls have these lists that you make, you know, of who you're gonna marry. And yeah, Tim, he doesn't play the piano or drive a ship. Uh, those were the only two things on my list. I was being open-minded. Because when you're young, you think you know how romance works, right? But that's not how romance works. How romance works is you meet somebody, you're tired, so you get married. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're lucky. It worked out great for us, right? But, um, oh, you think you know everything about romance when, like, I thought I did because my mom had stacks of those Harlequin romance paperbacks. Yes, it was like a red light district down at the end of the hallway. <laughs> and no teenage girl should ever read a romance novel because it sets you up for a lifetime of disappointment. <laughs> it does. Yeah. Because your husband doesn't understand that in order for romance to happen, one of you has to be out on the prairie. <laughs> yeah. Maybe doing some farm chores, okay? <laughs> Maybe you're washing clothes on one of those Wrigley boards and you're wearing your best peasant's dress and you're just working and you're washing and you're washing and you're wa and you're... <gasps> A pirate? <laughs> How did he get here? Yeah, and this novel takes place in Kansas, and that's a landlocked state, so... <laughs> anyway... But we're doing fine. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's a comic too, so I told you that, but we do get to travel uh, together sometimes, which is nice. We, what, have you been to San Francisco ever? Yeah, 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 we, we got to go there recently, um, but those people can never just tell you like what town they're from. They're, they always, they're always like, oh, I'm from the Bay Area. So I say, oh yeah, are you from Green Bay? <laughs> Tampa Bay, Bay of Biscay, Galway Bay. Uh, so many bays. Like, that's pretty pretentious just to claim two very vague geographical features for yourself, like bay and area. Like, you don't just get those. Yeah. I, I live in Minnesota now. When people ask me where I'm from, I don't say inland and expect them to know. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you get it. Well, sometimes I will say, well, I'm from the woods. But I know that's geography, but I'm rarely snooty about it. Um, you know, usually apologetic. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. Do I smell? I can go back outside. Uh, you know, I don't need to be in here on the good linoleum. Oh, woo, woo. <laughs> they waxed it. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I got for graduation. Well, that's what my mom got for graduation is new, new linoleum for the open house. I know, I have a lot of cultural barriers. <laughs> it's hard in LA doing shows too. I, I uh, like, I, has anybody, here's some things about me. Uh, whose family here has ever been aerial patrolled for having too many RV campers on your land? Anybody? <laughs> anybody? <laughs> See, these are the obstacles I face. I'm telling you, and you can, you can try to butt those 
RV campers up end on end and make it look just like one long RV camper. But the sky police are still gonna get ya. <laughs> What were we talking about? Oh, yeah, my, my mom still lives in the woods. Yeah, she's originally from Duluth, Minnesota. Um, yeah, that's a real pale society. <laughs> like, I, I'm gonna brag, I, I make a real good guacamole. Um, Cause I've left Minnesota and I've left Wisconsin and I've tasted guacamole. Um, <laughs> And then I did my best to replicate that back where I, I live. And uh, my mom, she can't, she has to call it avocado dip. Cause guacamole's too ethnic. Yeah. You wanna know what else is too ethnic for my mother? Uh, cilantro and John Denver. So. My husband now, he is refusing to visit my mom up at her shack cause she won't quit burning plastic. Yeah, I'm like, Tim, come on. She's 76, she's gonna burn some plastic, okay? There's no garbage service. It, it, like, it's not like she's got a tire fire burning, she's just real bad at sorting the garbage, all right? When I'm 76, I'm gonna see what burns. Uh, if he is so sensitive about it, why is he standing downwind of the pink campfire flames? You can see there's a rainbow shooting out of there. You gotta go to the other side. You can stay upwind of the polycarbons. Get some wood smarts. <laughs> I mean, what if we never would have got married? I know I have my issues, but would he always just be somewhere with his mouth around the exhaust pipe of a bus? <laughs> and be like, how'd this get here? <laughs> no, he's great. Uh, I, uh, my mom, uh, yeah, she's, uh, I'll say this, a lot of people don't believe in antidepressants, but for a while, my mom was taking them and I felt great. <laughs> oh, good, you get it, good. <laughs> um, I got some advice, anybody uh, thinking uh, dating or anything like that? I'm gonna be, be a little snoopy. Here's my advice. I think if you ever have the choice for ladies, you should marry an old guy. Yeah, cause old guys can do stuff. I don't wanna hurt anybody's feelings here, but young guys, what skills are you bringing to the table? Yeah. Tim didn't even have a socket set when we got married. I was like, we're gonna die. <laughs> There's always an accident where you can save your life with a socket set, especially if you know metric. <laughs> and I know metric, cause in school they said you gotta learn metric. This is the way the country's going. So I studied and I studied and, and they couldn't ever just give you a straight answer. They said, oh, okay kids, you wanna know what a, you wanna know what a meter is? Well, you know what a football field looks like, don't ya? Take that, divide by a hundred, then go a little bit more. <laughs> You know, the, the kilogram is very easy. The, that's 2.2 pounds, but they couldn't just say it. The teachers were like, think of a small cat. Ah! Oh, that's right and left brain. I was in the ungifted and untalented program. But I remembered this small cat and um, I, my mom and I would watch these Sunday night movies together. There'd always be like a drug dealer on these risque Sunday night movies. And the drug dealer would always say, that guy's gonna need a kilo of coke. 
And I turn to my mother and I say, Mother, that is like a small cat of cocaine. <laughs> We're learning it in school. I, uh, <laughs> no, but it's good to be handy, guy. I'm just giving the young guys a hard time. Uh, I, my husband moved in to my house. I bought a house about, what was it, about eight years ago because they were on sale. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. That was a, it's a clearance sale on houses. Um, and... Uh, I don't know if you ever tried applying for a mortgage before, but it's very embarrassing. I, I went into the bank to talk to the lady and the lady said something about credit. And then I was like, oh, I should get credit just for coming in here. Uh, it's a lot of work. They ask you so many questions like, Oh, hey, did you happen to apply for a Visa card in 1999 down at the 7-Eleven so you could get half off on a salted nut roll? <laughs> and you can't lie, it's a federal offense. So you have to be like, oh, I remember getting a good deal on a salted nut roll one time. and then you don't get a house. That's, it's, that's how it works. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I know a lot about finance, guys. Uh, I do my taxes quarterly, so like every four years. Uh, so, so Tim moves into my house and he's, he's so sweet, he's trying to help. And, he wants, he wants to do something nice. So he says, you know, you need some security fencing around this house. So I was like, yeah, great. He leaves, he comes back with some lattice work. It's like, what, did you go to Joanne Fabrics or something? <laughs> lattice work, what, what's your name, ma'am? Debbie. Debbie, you're, you look so sweet. Debbie, if you're in a surly mood, you could bound right through some lattice work, couldn't you? <laughs> Yeah, she even did this. She did this as if you had already bounded through some lattice work. Uh, thank you. Yeah, no, not even much motion. You're like a nit lattice work ninja. You just do a little <laughs> down. Well, I, I agree. I, I, it almost encourages you to want to rob a place, doesn't it? You're like, oh, lattice work. Maybe they got some craft projects in there we could steal. <laughs> Bob, did you bring your hot glue gun? We're gonna do a heist. <laughs> yeah, I brought my hot glue gun, but I gotta plug it in so that the bullets melt. <laughs> Bob should have sprung for the battery-operated hot glue gun. Anyway, but you know, old guys can do stuff. I don't know how, they just know. When my dad was born, he came out, they just stamped a refrigeration license on his birth certificate, you know? Like one day, this is a true story, one day my dad was having a heart attack and he saved his own life because he gave himself oxygen off the welding tanks. Yeah, that's what you do, young guys. <laughs> Yeah, do you just stay out on the lake and be lazy and have your heart attack? No, get off the lake, go get your welding tank, save your life. What if I don't own a welding tank? Well, drive to somebody's house who owns a welding tank. <laughs> Wouldn't it be faster to go to the doctor? Yeah, you could go to the doctor, but then you're just giving up. <laughs> I'm half laughing because most people don't know anything about welding tanks anymore. Um, who's been married for a while here? Oh, everybody. <laughs> you, you guys raised your hand right there. You, oh, but you want to retract that? You wanna re We're going to retract that statement. 
Twelve? Yeah, that's pretty long. You could. I mean, so who asked who to get married here? I, I could. Uh, him, yeah, and, and oh, I want to come over there so bad. <laughs> into the dark, into the dark. What's your name, sir? Kit. Kit. And what's your name, ma'am? Shanna. Shanna. Um, how did he ask? Yeah, Shanna. Mm-hmm. In the car at first. Boy, it was a long proposal. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. What? You, that's a re- very romantic way to ask. How do you feel about spending forever? To, I'm like, oh, I would have paid you to ask me that. <laughs> that's a nice way to propose. I, my husband, it was real romantic. Um, when my husband proposed to me, too, because uh, he came over and uh, I was sleeping. And uh, he goes, get up, we're leaving in 15 minutes. It's like, oh no, he must need me to help him lift a couch or something. <laughs> you know? So I, I go out to his truck uh, and I look at it, there's no couch in there. I get in, there's a real nice piece of cheese on the seat. Not, no cooler, nothing else, just a piece of cheese. And I got very suspicious, because we never buy cheeses with words from other languages in it, you know? Yeah, Sargento. So... So I'm nervous already. And we take off going down the highway, and he pulls over at a rest stop. Uh-huh, you know where this is going. Yeah, cause ever since I've been a little girl, I've been like, please God, please let somebody ask me to marry him at a rest stop, God. Please. please. Please let it be just a little bit after Labor Day so that all the porta potties are overflowing. Cause smell is the strongest memory sense. And <laughs> you'll never forget that. Oh, you won't ever. You'll remember the day. Um, and so, so that's how it happened. And and then. We had a, uh, uh, our wedding cost about $70, <laughs> including cleanup fees, um, because we saved all our money for what we thought would be a good idea. So um, let me, let me um, pass this on to you. It's not a good idea. Um, we went on a three-week honeymoon. <laughs> yeah, three weeks together. Like... That's 21 days together. Like, I love you, but not all in a row. Uh, th- Thanks, guys. I just, you just, you just gotta, you know, you gotta be good at giving compliments. That's one thing. Like, um, some people say when you get married, you give up. Not me. I, if we're going out somewhere, I like to curl my bangs up real tight. <laughs> I make a tight curl, and I'm in the bathroom about half an hour, and smoke is coming out of the iron. But I'm trying, and then I go out to the living room and present myself like a gift. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And he looks at me, he's like, oh, it looks like you got an awning on your forehead. <laughs> oh, thank you, I think. Uh, but you've got to keep it romantic, and it can be tough. Um, like, we, we can't hardly kiss because he's got a deviated septum. And that's a permanent nasal blockage, guys. If we want to kiss, i got to get a CPAP machine out. Um, got to be near an outlet. Marriage is a lot of work. Um, and I'll, I'll uh, end on this. Um, uh, is anybody struggling with a deviated septum right now? Anyone? They can't hardly get their hands in the air because they can't get enough air in. Well, don't worry, because I'm going to start a walk. 
and you can pledge us per mile and you're gonna know when we're coming through with our march, our charity march, because one day out on the street, you're just, you're just probably gonna hear something like this. again. Oh, I hope they finish their 1K this time. Hey guys, thank you so much for having me. Really appreciate it.